A reading from Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard than I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now, I'll tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. But the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Word of God, word of life. The song will be recited responsibly. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth that you are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of the Lord, Benjamin, Manasseh, Sarah, and Israel, You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It's a the mountains were covered by its shadow, and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. He stretched out its tendrils to the sea, and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its walls, so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have raised its line. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven. They burn it with fire like rubbish. At the rebuke of your countenance, let them perish. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, Lord. passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land, but when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For what would fail me, for what for time would fail me to tell all of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and in caves and in holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us with perseverance, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith who for the sake of joy that was set before him endured the cross, 
disregarding the shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> to hear you 
and obey you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. How many of you heard, were listening to the gospel lesson and were a bit, uh, hmm, I didn't know what was there. <laughs> Anyone have a reaction to the gospel text today? I'll admit that I had a reaction to the gospel text. Precisely because we are living in a time where it seems that we are very much divided. Um, and so I want to hear Jesus say that when we ask him, do you think we bring peace? I want Jesus to say, yes. Yes, I bring peace. Instead, Jesus says, I come to bring division. I've read a, a bit and I've prayed a lot more about this text and about our time together. And I'm realizing more and more, or confirming more and more, that Jesus is scandalous. That the God of the universe taking on flesh and walking in this fear that is earth is so scandalous that the culture, society, systems that are already in place are unable to adjust to this Jesus, to this God incarnate that is teaching us not only how to live, but how to live in relationship to God and in relationship to one another. And every time he teaches and every time he preaches, there is a reaction. There is a reaction from the people. In Luke chapter 11, if you remember, this came up in this year's lectionary. Jesus comes to the temple, is recounting the text in Isaiah. In Isaiah. He's confronting the people who say, this is, isn't this one of our kids? And he's going to be great. He's wonderful. We can celebrate him. And then he tells them their own truth. And once he tells them their truth of how they've decided who is in and who is out in their community, they decide to run him off a cliff. Do you remember this? They try to get him to run off a cliff, but instead he gets through the people and escapes. Over time and time again, he confronts systems, he confronts people, and time and time again, he gets a reaction that is not necessarily peaceful, but is scandalous and dangerous and not, um, not very kind. And so we're living in a time now that is quite divided. And the more that we as Christians attempt to speak a word of love that is unconditional and welcoming of all people, the more it seems that we become divided. And so in reading the text and reading the, the, the text in Isaiah and, and the, the, the other text today, we, we hear and learn that part of our call is to reflect and to be introspective in our own walk and how it is that when we hear a word that is controversial, a word that is inviting to something different than we are accustomed to, when we're invited into a word that is counter our culture, that we think and that we pray and that we trust that God is inviting us into something that is new and not necessarily peaceful in the way that we want to experience peace. You are Peace Lutheran Church in Waldorf. And so this particular text I find quite interesting for you as a congregation in this particular place, in this particular context. You alone know this space better than anyone else. You know what it means to say that all means all in this space. You know what it means to say no, no more oppression, no more marginalization, no more to what it makes, what, what divides us and keeps us separate. You know what that means for you. And God is calling us to be bolder and bolder in our faith and our profession of this God incarnate that comes into our world to proclaim peace and yet the world is unable, unable to fully grasp and understand. So one of the things that I um, am very cautious of is that we, I, I want Jesus to be the one to hold me 
right? I want Jesus to be the one to uh, help me breathe when things are difficult. And Jesus says, I will do that. I will be with you and I will give you peace that surpasses all understanding within your being and within your soul. That does not mean that the peace that you experience within is the peace that you're going to experience with community. And so that is the call. For us to claim and trust in the peace that surpasses all understanding in our hearts, in our being, in this particular space, so that we can engage the world that is not necessarily ready for the peace that is scandalous, for the peace that presses us to be bold, presses us to take risks that we may not want to take. And so one of the things that I am so grateful for is that in community, in this space, we get to receive this scandalous Christ at the table. We get to come and receive the body of Christ who gives us courage, which the text invites us to, gives us courage not only to live out our faith, but to daily repent and to daily think and process what is God calling us to today for such a time as this in this particular place and time. I ask that when we come to the table today that we take a moment back at our seats to reflect, to pray, to receive God's courage, Christ's boldness, and the peace that surpasses all understanding in our hearts, in our souls, so that we might give out our call for this time and place. Can I pray with you? Dear God, this word is not easy, but this word gives us life. We trust you. We love you. We are here because of you. You have called us to be peace in this particular place and time, and we know that it is risky, and we know that it won't be easy, and yet you call us and you give us strength, and you give us boldness, and you give us courage. We ask that you strengthen us, that together we may live into this call, and together we may profess that you are good, always, all the time, and that all the time you are good, and we trust you. We trust you today and always. In Jesus' name, amen.